All right, everybody. Today we are looking at my T-bar tank, and today we are going to do some work in my T-bar tank. So this is going to be another before and after video, but I think for the first time today I'm going to talk a little bit about hydrogen peroxide and how to use it uh, without killing your fish. I really don't want you using it if you're not really, really comfortable with what you're doing. Uh, but I talk about it enough that I feel like I, you know, I say not to do it unless you know what you're doing, but then I never give you any information about what you're doing. So today I am going to talk a little bit about uh, the safe use of hydrogen peroxide in your tank. It does a lot of different things. You can use it for a lot of different things. I chiefly use it for its killing power uh, and its sterilizing power. So remember, keep that in mind, killing power and sterilizing power. This is really, really uh, potent stuff. It is a powerful oxidizer, so a little goes a long way. Uh, first of all, you will notice when you look at your bottle of hydrogen peroxide, you'll see somewhere on the label it will say more than likely 3% USP or 3% aqueous solution. Uh, it might just say 3% hydrogen peroxide solution, something to that effect. And that's what you want to see. You want to see that 3%. Uh, if you've got stronger than 3%, then disregard everything else I'm saying. You've got hydrogen peroxide that's much, much stronger. Uh, and you don't want to use that. You want to use the uh, cheap store brand stuff that is a mere 3% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, when you're using that, you do not want to use more than 3 milliliters per gallon of water. I tend to err to the side of caution and I go a little light on that. I usually go about 2 to 2.5 just in case. Uh, that gives me a little bit of breathing room in case I miscalculate. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is when you are calculating the gallons of water uh, this is a 40 gallon tank, but you'll notice there's lots and lots of rocks and woodwork and substrate. There's not actually 40 gallons of water in this tank, so I usually calculate it out at about 35 gallons, and then I go by about two and a half um, mil per gallon. Uh, the other thing you want to keep in mind is if you're going to do a full tank treatment like I'm doing today, and this is what we're mainly treating for, I've got a lot of cyanobacteria growing down here and I've got a lot of cyanobacteria growing all over the woodwork in there it's really just nasty looking stuff and if you will also notice the glass has a lot on it uh, I wipe the glass down frequently but it just grows back and it's actually hair algae on the grass, uh, glass it's really tough stuff so what I'm gonna do is dose this tank I usually dose it with a hundred milliliters uh, I let it sit for about 20 minutes and then I start doing a massive water change and when I say massive I mean at least 60% uh, you really want to make sure you get all that hydrogen peroxide out of the tank before you refill it. So I've got, and here's another good example of the cyanobacteria growing all over um, everything in there. It's just, it's just, it never goes away. I just kind of have to stay on top of it, and this is how I stay on top of it. So let me get started, and we will have a look at what I'm actually doing with the filter. Uh, and the hydrogen peroxide itself as I put it in the tank because it's important to note uh, a few things about the filter and water circulation while we're doing this. So sit tight and I will be right back. Alright, you can see all of the debris stirred up in there. That is from me removing some of the filtration. I've taken the biofilters out and I've also taken the filter pads out. I'm sorry there's not more light but I don't have a whole lot of uh, light over in this corner. Uh, but that is basically just an empty filter box. I have the biofiltration. The little sponge pads are safely being kept in fresh water. Uh, if you are not sure about your tap water, uh, then use some tank water, but keep them in some water that is not going to kill them. You don't want to use uh, tap water if there's any chlorine or chloramines in it or anything like that. Uh, so treat that as you always would your biofiltration, but you need to separate it from uh, the tank's water while you're doing this hydrogen peroxide treatment. Uh, the other thing is I pull the actual filter pads out because the way the hydrogen peroxide works is each molecule can only do its thing one time. It gets one shot to kill and then it is a disassociated molecule when it turns into water and oxygen. So if it's going through your dirty filters, it's doing a lot of killing in the filters and that's basically wasting your killing power. So you don't want to waste it on the filters themselves. You don't want to impede the circulation. You want as much circulation as possible while this is happening. So take all that stuff out, get it down to an empty filter box. And in this case, what I am doing, uh, I have this giant syringe here that holds 100 cc's. I have it filled up to 95 cc's. 
Uh, conveniently, the brilliant simplicity of the metric system allows me to easily convert that to 95 uh, milliliters as well and then I just slowly feed that in to the water and let it do its thing and circulate uh, I do feed it in fairly slowly so it has a chance to mix and doesn't really go into any one spot in the tank too quickly uh, there it gives you a little better idea how easily I gently run it in and that's it so now we will sit and let the tank go for about 20 minutes and then we'll begin doing an actual water change. I've said before, I will say it again, spend $1.59 or whatever one of these little things costs. It's a cheap little wind-up timer. will save you a lot of headache and heartache. I'll see you in 20 minutes. All right, here we are 20 minutes later and we are beginning the draining process now I say 20 minutes because 30 is really about how long you want it to treat for uh, but I cannot drain the tank instantly so I have to begin now uh, so that I can actually sort of get to the process of filling the tank back up with fresh water by the 30 minute mark because I really don't want the fish exposed to the hydrogen peroxide any longer than absolutely necessary uh, and you do need to leave it in there for at least 15 to 20 minutes for it to have an effect. If it's not in there long enough, it's not really doing anything. And you're basically exposing your fish to it for no reason. So if you do it, you've got to be committed and you've got to do it for the full 20 to 30 minute treatment. Now what I'm going to do while the tank is draining is I'm going to take a handy dandy scrub brush and I'm going to start getting in there and gently scrubbing the wood and knocking some of the stuff loose uh, while I'm draining the tank. I want to suck as much of it out of the tank as possible because this will just land and start growing in other places if it's in the tank. I also want to do it while I'm draining the tank because this water is the water that has the hydrogen peroxide in it. So anything that gets knocked loose and starts moving around in the water uh, is in water that does have some killing power to it. So that will help as well. And then we will show you uh, what we're going to do when we start filling the tank back up because I actually do uh, one step beyond and I drain water out as I'm putting water back in uh, to really make sure I thoroughly flush out all the hydrogen peroxide I put in the tank. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, let's see if we can't get some camera footage of me getting in there and scraping some of the uh, algae and cyanobacteria off of the wood. So sit tight and let me see if I can't work this out. All right, everybody, I'm trying. Uh, got this in an awkward position here. Normally, I would be using what I'm now using as my camera hand as my uh, vacuum hand, and I would simply get in there and just very gently scrub the wood and try to get the vac to suck as much of it out as I can while I'm scrubbing. And it just makes it a little less maintenance in the long run. The more stuff you can vac right out of the tank, the better. Uh, rather than have it get in the tank and just swirl around. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. I'm sorry if I'm not doing the best camera work here. I'm trying to do three things at once. Uh, so let me get started doing this for real and we will get back to doing the video here in a moment. But you can already kind of see those big green clumps floating around. Uh, those are clumps of cyanobacteria and I really don't want them uh, getting into the tank and floating around freely too much. So sit tight and we will get to the next stage in a moment. Alright everybody and here we are at the final stage before really filling it back up in earnest. Uh, I actually just saw the black ghost knife fish in the back of the tank moving around a little bit there. So he's probably not happy about all of the water change that's going on and uh, it has been a little while that they've been exposed to this hydrogen peroxide so he might start being uh, starting to be getting a little bit irritated. That would not surprise me. So what I'm doing to prevent that is I am running fresh water back into the tank. I have also sprayed hydrogen peroxide directly on all of the wood and rocks and filter and glass and I did that knowing that I've already got hydrogen peroxide in the water so I just added a lot more. Um, so be mindful of things like that. I've done that in the past where I was not mindful of that and I've killed a lot of animals. Uh, so this time I am accounting for that. I am actually running fresh water into the tank while uh, I am draining it as well. So the water is actually uh, clearing out of the hydrogen peroxide and that's given me a few extra minutes to allow the water or the uh, hydrogen peroxide that is sprayed all over the surface area 
to work for a little bit before it actually gets covered back up with water as the tank refills so let me get on with that because i really need to start emptying this bucket and uh, i just keep this process going for about 10 or 15 minutes so that that water is thoroughly cycled out and uh, fresh water is back in the tank so effectively i'm doing a 100 percent water change today to ensure that all this hydrogen peroxide is out so let's sit back i'm going to get done on this and then we will do the uh, before and after at the end and we'll wrap up any uh, conclusions and closing thoughts All right, everybody, there's your uh, final result. Makes quite a difference, doesn't it? Now, when I got in there and scrubbed, I didn't scrub vigorously. I didn't scrub everything down. I basically just scrubbed the wood down a little bit. Once I stopped filming, I was able to use the vac and do it a little more efficiently. Uh, the leaves down here uh, got a little bit of a cleaning. I was able to get in there with the vac, and the cyanobacteria does not hang on very tightly. So since it was weakened by the hydrogen peroxide, I was able to knock a lot of that loose and get it out of there. But you can see it's still got plenty of it on there. Uh, the rocks and everything cleaned up fairly nicely. Uh, this rock here is a new one. That's why we're still working the uh, algae in on it. And that will eventually develop a nice patina and will look like it's a part of the tank rather than standing out like that. But I brought the wood back to life. That looks nice. It doesn't look green anymore. Uh, and we will once again just begin the process of watching it grow back in and the tank will get dirtier and dirtier. Uh, this is the cost of having brightly lit, uh, heavily stocked tanks with lots of um, organics in there. I'm a heavy feeder and uh, the end result is a lot of tank, ma uh, tank maintenance all the way around. So this hydrogen peroxide is not something I take lightly. It's not something I do often. I do this maybe once a month uh, at the most. And I am actually about to order some uh, actual cyanobacteria treatment, and uh, maybe I'll do a little video about that. But I really want to give this tank a good dose of treatment for the cyanobacteria specifically, uh, rather than putting a generic uh, kill-all in there like hydrogen peroxide that will kill everything from your plants to your fish to the bacteria. Uh, so we will get on that, and that will be another video coming up in the near future. So if you're not already subscribed, please do so. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. And I really still hope you don't put hydrogen peroxide in your fish tanks. It's very dangerous. So that's my final disclaimer. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you real soon.